All right, this is the Iron Rapport Stereo Podcast, coming live and direct from the gloom tomb of Los Angeles, California. My name is Michael Rappaport, a.k.a. the Gringo Mandingo, a.k.a. White Mike, a.k.a. Mr. White Folk. Uh, I'm in here with my partner. His name is G. Monetti. Um, you can introduce yourself. This is G. Monetti. G Moody, a.k.a. the Black Ed McMahon in the house. What's the deal? So, so first I want to talk about, um, I, I, I mean, obviously, I don't think there's anything we could say that hasn't been said are speaking for both of us, because me and Gerald talked about it yesterday, um, our deepest, deepest, deepest thoughts, prayers, sympathies uh, go out to everybody affected by what happened in um, Orlando over the weekend. It's a fucking tragedy. Um, yes. <clears throat> and I hope that anybody that listens to this podcast isn't of the mindset of thinking that uh, this wasn't anything other than an act of a sick individual. Nobody of any race, creed, color, sexuality deserves this. It could have been anybody. It could have been blacks. It could have been Jews. It could have been Spanish. It could have been Christians. It could have been Amish. It could have been anybody. It could have been your kids. It could, it could be my kids. Uh, this is, there's no excuses. There's no rationality. And there's no exception for, for any of it. It's, it's devastating. It's shocking. Um, and, and, and I know that, uh, you know, I just wanted to just make sure that everybody understands that we, we, from from the Iron Rap Port Stereo podcast, we ag acknowledging it, um, dedicating the episode doesn't do anything, uh, but we'll come up with something um, at some point. You know, when 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 more information, I think it, it's only the right thing to do. Um, you know, a couple of people on Twitter <clears throat> suggested we no longer say no Bruno. And at first I thought, yeah, that's absolutely right. But then I thought about, which, which is a term that, that we didn't make up, but I think we made famous because uh, there used to be a term that I've never said in real life or on the podcast because I never thought it was, I was never comfortable with it. But, you know, it was a slang term to be like, you could say, oh, I got in their ass last night talking about a basketball game. And you say, no homo. I never said that. I, I never took any, I, I, I thought that that was offensive. The reason why we embraced the, the no Bruno term is because to me, it's so stupid. It's so silly. And the Bruno character is so funny. So we're going to, we're going to put it to the side for now. Um, but I know that our intentions with that were, were never to even replicate the, 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 that, that derogatory term of no homo, which we've never said. Absolutely. Um, but obviously we, we you know, we don't want to offend anybody, um, uh, in, in any way, shape, or form in regards to sexuality, race, creed, color, gender, anything like that. You know, we break balls, uh, but we try to do it in the most lighthearted, uh, it's all fun and games type of way for and the most do. part. And we do. Yeah. Yeah. So, so um, anyway, that's my piece on that. You, 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 I know you, we talked about this over the weekend. You, you want to speak on what happened in Orlando? I, I just... I just think it's so so silly, man, that that people would attack other folks for their sexual preference and who they want to be with. I don't I, I, I think another person doing whatever they want to do with someone else whom they love shouldn't be a problem for anyone. You know what I'm saying? Like and to actually go there and to kill folks and to to cause all the carnage just for just for all the hatred of gay people seemingly but why do you hate them so much they don't bother anybody yeah. they, they they love each other so live and let live and, and i'm not sure there's been so many different reports and i had to turn it off today because it's just so upsetting um i had to give it a break i'm pretty sure but i'm not sure you know we don't fact check even even serious things um but this person, we're not saying his name. He's a fucking piece of shit. Yeah. Uh, and these guys keep getting off. They keep getting killed or killing themselves. All right. That's um, the whole, yeah. That's the whole point. They they don't want to. 
They want to cause as much damage. They don't want to be held culpable for this shit. Did this person have kids? I think so. So I don't know. What did he think? He was going to go to this 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 club and, and murder people and then continue on being a father? <laughs> like, you, you, like, that's I don't understand. Like, like that. See, that just goes to show when someone's crazy, amongst other things, that there's no rationale. Like, you sacrificed all this. Like, what did you think? So now all these people's lives are lost. Your child doesn't have a father. It, it, it's just one thing after another. And, and I'm going to go um, right off the top. Miles, to, give me sick fuck of the week music. This award is earned, not given. It's called the sick fuck of the week. This guy's really sick. Lock him up. How could you do it? Don't let him out. Damn. You fucked the door? You what? You fucked the dog? Why would you fuck the dog? Why would you fuck your girlfriend's dog? What sick fuck? The sick fuck of the week. It's earned. Earned. Not given. You did. What? No. 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 no! This Texas Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick, not to be confused with the sports uh, personality Dan Patrick, you're the sick fuck of the week. Mm-hmm. You're a sick fuck. <laughs> and and I'm sick and tired of these all these people standing behind. I don't. I, I again. I don't want to offend anybody with any of this stuff. I really don't like to talk about religion. But for this guy, L- Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick, the same day, he 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 posted a tweet saying, "Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. Mm. You're a piece of shit." Yeah. For sure. You're a sick fuck. And 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 to sit there and, and like to read that passage out of the Bible and then skew it as oh this is God. No no God, no no any of any any sort, no book is it is valid in this. And and for, the fact that you know that if you work at like a company and you you did this you get fired, but the governor, he could still be the governor after doing that. Right, right. Right. So Dan Dan Patrick, Governor Dan Patrick, you're the sick fuck of the week. It's an award that is never just given, it's earned. You're the sole sick fuck of the week. If we have other sick fucks, we're going to push them into next week because Dan Patrick, that's his name, I'm going to keep saying it, who's a governor mm. in the United States, in Texas. Wow. You're a real sick piece of shit. Okay, and I wouldn't be surprised if you walk around with a thumb up your ass because not you, if, if you hate the gays, you probably hate yourself. Okay, and and and, and if for, for have that kind of hate, and you think that oh, you, oh, the Bible says this. No, you're a sick fuck. Okay, um, we're gonna get into some music now, um, and then we're gonna start this show. All right, the Iron Rapport Stereo Podcast is brought to you by Seat Geek. SeatGeek is the first place I look for tickets to a game or a concert. I have the SeatGeek app on my phone, and I used it the other day to get tickets for a group of Dodger tickets. I needed Dodger tickets for a birthday party. I went on there. It was, it was so easy and so easy to use. Even better, every ticket on SeatGeek is given a grade based on value, so you can immediately find underpriced tickets. And before you buy, you could use SeatGeek's detailed map to see the view from your seat. So basically, I got tickets about... 15 rows behind the third baseline. And I could see on the map at SeatGeek.com what the seats and what my tickets will actually look like when I'm in Dodger Stadium. Damn. Best of all, SeatGeek is always honest and upfront about the price. Unlike StubHub, SeatGeek shows a full ticket price from start to finish and never surprises you with huge charges at the end. I hate when they do that. You come a long way and at the end they fucking go here and you got to pay $499. Fuck you. Mm. I don't want to pay four hundred ninety nine dollars. Mm. My listeners get a twenty dollar rebate off their first SeatGeek purchase. Download the SeatGeek app for free. SeatGeek S E A T G E E K. Go to the settings and tab and click the promo code. Enter the code Rappaport R A P A P O R T. SeatGeek will send you twenty dollars after you've made your first ticket purchase. I swear by SeatGeek. Anytime I need to go to a concert or a ball game or any kind of event, SeatGeek is where I go first. All right. I did a lot of talk in there. <laughs> uh, how you feeling, G-Mo Nettie? Hell, man. Everything is good, man. I just, you know, a couple of days ago, I was watching that uh, ESPN thing with uh, Muhammad Ali and, you know, the service and uh, reading stuff online. And, 
the one thing that was a constant that I I kind of disliked because I see the, the the whitewashing and the wiping out of Muhammad Ali's real identity. And the word was he transcended race, which I take mm. I take that as an insult. See, it's mm. like, it's ba- how come? Because basically it's this it's like what they're saying with OJ. He was colorless. Right. That may be true for OJ, but Muhammad Ali was always unapolog- unapologetically black. He right. never he wore that on his sleeve. He aligned himself with black people in the streets because he saw himself like that. And he and he saw them getting treated like shit. So it made no difference. These are and he always wore that on his sleeve. So for them people to get up there and say that he wasn't black, he was for all people. He may have been for all people, but he was for black people first. Right. Or or the thing I think that you, they said the most, some people said, I never saw him as a black man. Right. So, so what the fuck does that mean? Right. So for you to say that. So you so, never saw him as a black man, but the rest of yeah. black society, you saw them as what? As Exactly. So what do you see him as then? He's clearly black. He speaks. Right. He always, you know, is, is trumping black of uh, the civil rights at that time. So for you to be up there now and say, oh, he transcended race like he wasn't black. So I'm saying like this rap, I, I came up with like, uh, uh, like I tried, I decoded what these people are saying. Right. Here it Go is. Ahead. If it's, uh. if, if it's a speech, I, like many of you in the audience, don't really like black people, but this one, was different. He transcended yeah, he's, he, race. He's fine with me. I don't like that. And we take that as an insult. No, he was black. Just say that. Just fucking right. say that. And, and and that's a great thing. He, you, 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 I agree with you 150%. And also, wait, wait one more point, Rap. And you can one, make 10 more points, Monetti. You're the co-host, the 2015 podcast co-host of the year. There's a reason why you were bestowed that honor. Please for, go. For sure. Now, Rap. One other thing, there's one guy that they, no one mentioned. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad is responsible for the Muhammad Ali that the world loves because Muhammad Ali didn't really finish school. He would be the first to tell you, you know, he he didn't get good grades. Elijah Muhammad is the one who taught him to love himself, love his people, and to be, and he changed his name. He told him, get rid of that slave name, the Cassius Clay, and go mm-hmm. and, and let me give you a name that will be respected around the world. And what happened? Exactly. So you why, cannot, why do you think no, that, that he's no not Muhammad tied Ali. into his legacy? There's no Muhammad Ali that you know without Elijah Muhammad. So I just want to put his you. name out there. Well, why do you think that he, he, he's not being tied into his legacy since he's passed? I think it's because... He 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 teaches black pride. Like he he makes men, black men, he gives them the real history and knowledge of themselves because black people in this country, we get the wrong education about ourselves. So, right. so the self-esteem is a problem. So Elijah Muhammad builds that up. Look what Malcolm X was before he heard Elijah Muhammad. He right. was a pimp, he was a, one of the one of the dregs of society. Right. So he builds the self-esteem up and that's what happened to Muhammad Ali. Right. Right. No, I hear you. I hear you. Um, I, I, I thought that the uh, the, the service, um, you know, I, I think that the, the way the press handles it is 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 doing a disservice by not explaining that stuff. I think there's still a lot of fear and discomfort with the nation of Islam. I think it's gotten even worse because of the. Some of the mis not some of the we know what it is the, the, with with the with the radical ISIS and the Islam that's right. that's being pump, pumped as as one thing and then obviously we know that Islam is not a religion about um, about violence and 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 and, and all this stuff and, and and Muhammad Ali you know he he uh, he went through a journey and and you know he said something you know there's been so many so many things said. And, and I've watched so much stuff on him, and it's so worthy. 
And, it, and, and I, I got to be honest, you know, I cried. I cried a lot on Friday, I literally cried. Like I had an emotional reaction to um, his memorial, um, to, to the, the driving through the streets, to the way the people were responding to him. Yes. Um, it brought up a lot of emotions for me. Like I said on the other podcast, I mean, Muhammad Ali, n- n- not just for me, for tons of people, but I can speak for myself. I mean, he's been a part of my life for as long as I can remember, and he's always m- meant so much and so much inspiration and so much joy and so much humor. And it was it was hard to see him go. You know, it's crazy. I, I think I might have said this. I'll repeat myself. But I, 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 I had thought a lot in the last, I say, 10 or 12 years not a lot, but it, I thought about it consistently about Muhammad Ali passing and, and what that would mean to me. Like almost the same way I think about, you know, a, a family member passing. Right. Like, you know, as your family members get older, like I, I imagine that because he's like, he's not my family, but he's just meant so much to me right. um, personally as an athlete and as everything. And it, it was it was hard to watch. Right you now, know, uh, now imagine, imagine how we like we feel seeing like his 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 um. His identity, like who he was, being kind of whitewashed, especially right. no, I hear like you. Muhammad Ali is is very big in Black America because he was proud of himself. You see, OJ is the opposite, and in that right. Made in America that I saw that uh, on um, ABC, I I, I, I gained a, a new distaste for this man because of of categorically trying to separate yourself from your own people at that time when. We're, we're struggling to get rights and all the athletes are, are coming together and you get on television and say, no, I'm not with that. And I'm so, and Muhammad I don't want to be viewed as black. Opposite. I want to be viewed as OJ. Fuck you, man. So that's what I'm saying. Like him. And that's why you see, they were dissing him. Like they, like for, for somebody to say, you know, we didn't look at OJ as black. I would, I would feel, I would feel terrible. As a black person, because who you see me as then? Right. I'm not white. And, and who do you see the rest of black America right. as? So that's what I'm saying. Like it's it, it's a code word for I don't I, he. It's just like that shit didn't do the right thing, you know, uh, with the John Turturro, Spike Lee, uh, you know, scene, you know, like Bruce, uh, uh, Prince. Well, no, it was Prince, Eddie Murphy, um, Magic. Who was it? Magic Johnson, they're not black. I mean, they're black, but they're not like, you know, it's, it's, it's that classic scene in, 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 in Do the Right Thing. It, it, it means it's like these are good ones. Right. That's what that means. Yeah. These are good ones. Right. And all the other ones are, are, are not necessarily good. Exactly. And until you go through my vetting process and my approval process, you ain't shit. You know, one of the things that I can't remember, it was the first person, I don't remember his name, the preacher who spoke. He was the first person at the actual service. Right. He said something. It, it just... It was so beautiful, and I, I never heard it said this way. He, he, he said that um, before James Brown said, I'm black and I'm proud, Muhammad Ali said, I'm black and I'm pretty. And I just was like, this guy, man, he just, he was the, he truly was the greatest. Yeah. He was the greatest. And, and, and he's not perfect, and he had flaws, and, you know, all that stuff, but he just was the greatest, man. He just was so special, and it was such, so obviously, uh, put on the earth to do something magnificent, and and, and he really did it. He, he and to, to yes, go ahead. and he deserved he deserved everything, and he was brave, and and he is he's a champion, man, in all aspects of life. Yeah, and and the crazy thing is that his service boxing it came up as like a side note. It, it, it never was like oh he did this in the ring, did that in the ring. That's a whole other thing it's like he they talk about the person who he was the father he was the husband the activist and just the 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 generous soul uh that he was more than any of his skills which were at the time and 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 still so unmatched and and totally it it was like when you when he came out as a fighter i mean muhammad ali is a big dude when 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 he was young he was six three two twenty yeah you know, that's a big person. That's a large, and he was moving around like a fucking flyweight, like a like like a middleweight, running around the ring with these fast hands and these fast feet, and and all that stuff that you know everybody mocks and you know plays around with with the ollie shuffle and the rope a dope and you know the, the 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 fake and the punches and he was doing all this in real fights as a heavyweight. So 
Anyway, he, we could go on and on and on about right. Muhammad Ali. He's gonna. He came up before he passed many times, and he's gonna continue to come up uh, because he he means so much to us. So both me and you watched, and I, and I strongly urge people to to watch it because we're gonna we're gonna talk about it. Uh, the Thirty for Thirty, which is airing uh, on ESPN. Uh, and it, it's airing on e- ABC, and then it's going to air on the ESPN app uh, to download um, and to stream them. O.J. Simpson Made in America, which I had heard so much about, and I actually had gotten uh, um, sent an early copy of it, <clears throat> but it, it had my name watermarked, so you know you can't download it and sell it on 116th Street like a fucking scumbag. <laughs> Not that I would, right? Um, but but I, I refused to watch it that way because I was just so excited uh, to, to watch it. Um, and I finally uh, w- watched it this weekend. And, you know, first of all, I want to try to get this guy, Ezra Edelman, the director, because this is a masterpiece. I mean, just the filmmaking and the effort that it, I know it took to make a, an eight-hour film of, of this of, of this uh, quality yes. is, is crazy. And then just the, you know, I only saw one part, just like everybody else, but the dual messages... Um, and the sort of biopic, because it's a biopic about OJ, but it goes into the landscape of, of, of the 60s. It goes in specifically the landscape of Los Angeles during, during the, you know, it went all the way back to the 30s and gives you the history of, of, of the police department and how they were viewed and how they viewed people. Uh, 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 black people and, 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 and Latino Mexican people predominantly in Los Angeles at that time. Um, I mean, and right off the top, the, the film opens up with O.J. Simpson now at his most recent parole hearing because, you know, we forget or get confused. He's in jail now for something that has nothing to do with with uh, with Nicole Simpson. Um, and, and they ask him, you know, he's talking about what he does in jail and, you know, and he cleans toilets and he cleans, you know, the, the, the fitness equipment and la, la, la. And when they ask him, when was the first time where you were arrested it, you see, like, the, the lack of humility in O.J. Simpson. He's, like, baffled that they were asking him. And you could tell that right then, we're like, you're not getting paroled, asshole. Yeah. You're still you a shouldn't. fucking... You shouldn't get to poll. And, and, and another thing that I thought was interesting is that his... his, his I, th- I believe it was his first wife, who you learned this in the documentary, who he... Who his, his best friend, Al Collins, who he grew up with, who's the guy who drove him in the in the white bronco who played football with him and that was like his his guy his first wife originally was al collins who was his was his best friend at the time he he took his best friend's girlfriend and had no qualms about it yeah um and but i thought it was one thing i thought it was interesting is that they have the, all this archival footage they asked oj about um they asked his wife when they were in college, because they were like the, the, the bell of the ball. You know, he was like a star. Right. They asked his wife, what kind of person is OJ? And, and, and her first thing that came out of her mouth, and the only thing that came out of her mouth, they, they could have edited it, but the first thing that came out of her mouth, and again, they, 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 there might have been more, because I know how movies are put together, but the first thing she said was, well, he's a very serious person. Yes, he's I very." Remember. And I was like, that shit, I was like, who, when you're 19, 20 years old, who says that about their husband? Right. Not, oh, he's a loving guy. He's uh, funny. He's very sweet. He's a great. The first thing that she said was, he's a serious person. Yeah. And I was like, what the fuck is, what, what, why, what is she, why is he so, what, is she scared of this motherfucker? Yeah, that's it an just, indicator. I, it, yeah, it, it caught me as, it caught me as weird, but. You know, I, I I really really suggest everybody watches it. Um, what what, what else about uh that first episode? Were, were you uh were you digging and and and, took, and and tripping out off? I took away three things from this this that episode. When the first when he said, "I'm not black, I'm OJ," right? And I I'm and I was baffled by that. So in his mind, there there's a negative connotation with the being black, right? And and him, he had a double consciousness. Like right. it's a term from a W. B. Du Bois. Du Bois. He he looks at himself through the eyes of a hostile white society. So he he doesn't see himself as a black person. He look he's looking at himself through their eyes. So uh. so he doesn't want anything to do with black people. So as a uh. result. This is where your life is at the end of it. You cannot do that. It seems 
at that time, and it's probably still now, some now, in order to be embraced by this society, the black person has to denounce his blackness. And OJ did that willingly, and he got rewarded. He got rewarded. You could, you could. He did it in spades. He did it openly. Right. And it was interesting. Like they talked to the the, the people that created the the Hertz commercials. And if, and if you're not, if you if you haven't seen it, and you're not our age, you know the Hertz commercials with OJ were were very iconic. Number one, just because they were good commercials. Number two, you know he's running around the airport jumping over shit. But when they spoke to the people and how it was all uh, all came about, the 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 ad men. Like uh, the the TV show Mad Men, those guys, um, the, the 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 head of the ad company, he he looked at, he said, he's another one. He said, I looked at OJ as colorless. He doesn't look black. This motherfucker had an afro. What the fuck are right. you talking about? He doesn't look. He said he doesn't have black features. He got a bell pepper nose. I mean that sh he's as black as I mean he's not like I mean there's nothing not black about him but 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 it was just it, he was saying his disposition what he was saying the code word is his disposition is safe to me his disposition is he's not like those other black people right. he's not like those n words that's what you want to say right fred fred levinson that guy just just straight up looking in the camera just dissing black people and this guy was there you know, like during the 60s, early 70s, whatever. And I'm sure they were saying that shit to him. And he was smiling. He's one of them dudes. This is the Iron Rapport Podcast, and we'll be right back. Welcome to Play It, a new podcast network featuring radio and TV personalities talking business, sports, tech, entertainment, and more. Play it at play.it. We got to discuss um, Draymond Green getting suspended. Yes. Um, I, I, here's what I want to say uh, before we discuss the game itself. Yeah. LeBron James has been to seven finals now. He's won four MVPs and countless other awards and records. And now you could add snitch yeah. to your resume, you yeah. fuck. No doubt. Draymond called him a bitch. I, I heard he actually called him a a, a, a Mark ass bitch. I don't know if that's true. Other reports said that Draymond Green called LeBron James a punk ass bitch, and then there was a third report that said Draymond Green called him a bitch ass trick. I have no idea which one of these are true, but it was all the the B word was apparently used, and that set LeBron off. And then the whole incident, which we don't need to go over, but I will real quick because I'm, I assume some of the people out here don't follow basketball and don't give a shit, and that's because of the worldwide popularity of the I Am Rapport Serial Podcast. But essentially, Draymond Green has accumulated a bunch of technical fouls, blah, 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 blah. After the game, LeBron James, uh, he, he said that Draymond called him a word that was unacceptable and that he crossed the line, which it was either punk-ass bitch, mark-ass bitch, or bitch-ass trick. And that along with the fact that Draymond Green, he didn't hit him in the dick. He might have tried to, but every man will attest. If you get hit in the dick soft or hard, you will keel over at least for a second. Even if you don't get hit... Yeah. You'll keel over and you'll grab yourself to make sure everything is functional. Yeah. The fact that LeBron James didn't get hit proves he only got hit in the shorts. Right. Was LeBron was Draymond's intention to possibly hit him in the dick, aka the loaf? Yes, it was. But he didn't do it because LeBron James didn't react to it. So he essentially hit him in the shorts and then he got awarded a freak a flagrant foul and he's suspended for game five. I think it's bullshit. I think LeBron James has added snitch. And again, this is just proving the moniker LeBron blames. He bl he blamed look Draymond for his his reaction and for for him losing his cool aka LeBron blames and and I don't know man I, I think it fucks with the I think they should have suspended him for 10 games and going into the regular season instead of this shit right this is the NBA finals it's, this is not cool what's the big deal about somebody calling you a bitch on the court like we play basketball I mean that's Man, that's that's the light thing. I mean, people. Yeah, that that's the fucking. That's like that's like that's at the opening tap. I get called a bitch when I come out to shake hands. That's that's nothing. That's nothing. Nothing. Yo, and why is this guy stepping over him? You don't have to do right. that. 
He didn't have to do that. He probably thought he probably thought it was David Blatt, so he could step over him like he did David Blatt to get to fucking to to to, to, to get him thrown out of there. Yo. So anyway, we're gonna we're gonna go into the, the results of Game Five. Yo, I'm telling you right now, this is a very very exciting thing. We're doing some live shows this summer, folks. Yes. We're starting out. We're starting out July 28th at the Cedar Cultural Center in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Me and G Monetti, July 28th in Minnesota, the I Am Rapport Stereo Podcast World Motherfucking Tour. Pre sale t- tickets start Thursday, June 16th. General public on sale June 17th. Ticket links are available on the podcast description. July 28th, we're at the, in, in Minneapolis. July 29th, we're in Milwaukee. And July 31st, we're at Lincoln Hall in Chicago, Illinois. The, the Iron Rapport Stereo Podcast World Tour, it's starting. It's getting really real. I, I, I'm hyped up about it. I'm a little nervous. Me and G Mode, we're starting to train right now. Um, it's going to be live and direct for all the people. H- how are you feeling about this, Monetti? I'm raring to go. I'm raring to show what we know on the road. And people love it. And we love it. And we love doing it. So I'm looking forward to this, man. Yeah, it's going to be nice. It's going to be nice. Um, yo, I'm not big into the Tony Awards. My lady uh, was in the crib last night. I was trying to sleep. <laughs> I can't. I can't. I can't fuck with the Tony Awards. It, it, it's just not my thing. And you know, the reality of it is that those people that sing and dance on Broadway are so much more talented than 99 percent of the the big Hollywood stars, including myself. These fucking guys sing, dance. They do it all on cue. The cast of Hamilton, all the cast of all those shows, all of them. Yep. They're incredible. Yes. I just don't give a fuck. Now, <laughs> I, one of the reasons why I don't give a fuck is because when I go to these theater events, when I go to see live shows, it's like, forget about coach. If you sit and coach in the middle, that's what it's like sitting to, to watch a Tony Award in a good seat. A coach seat in the middle row. Dang. There's no way around it. You could, you'll spend $500 and have motherfuckers like all on you. Front, back, and center. I, I, I can't do it. But one of the things that stuck out to me, you know, I used to love Meg Ryan. Meg Ryan was a ginormous fucking star. Yes. You know, when Harry Met Sally was obviously probably her biggest role, but she's done tons and tons and tons of things. You know, she distorted her face. This was a cute, you know, like she was never like drop dead gorgeous, but she was always cute and attractive. And I don't know, she's only 54 years old. I don't know what, it's not aging. Mm-hmm. She did something crazy to her face, man, and ruined her face, man. It, it looks nuts. I feel so bad for this woman. She she looks crazy. Hey, it's that it's that Kim Kardashian thing, man. They they following her. <laughs> yeah, it looks it look. I feel bad for her. I saw her in real life once after she had done it, and it wasn't as bad as she she looked last night on the on the uh, the, the the Tonys. But she looked crazy. Wow. She looked really really nuts. Um, and uh, other than that, you know, just so you know, because there was the big, uh, because I, you know, all the protesters, I, we've talked about this too, you know, the Oscars so white, four actors of color won uh, major musical awards last night at the Tonys. I, I don't see any uh, hoopla about it w- when people win. So that should be acknowledged. Four actors of colors, congratulations to them, uh, won big awards last night at the Tonys. But, but, but this should be brought to the attention um, when, you, when, when, when self-serving folk want to protest uh, uh, other award shows. Right, right. Um, exactly. You, you know what I mean? Because no one's talking about that. Where, where's the, where's the, the, the shout outs and the, the videos <laughs> congratulating these people for winning? It's, it's only when shit's bad or if you're, if you're uh, you know, baby daddy or your cousin or your own film doesn't get nominated, then you want to get hype. But, but where did you send these people a Rolex uh, protester? Did, did they get a cake, something, a pair of sneakers, some New Balance, anything? Uh, so, right. uh this is right. the Iron Rap Poor Stereo Podcast. Miles, let me get some funk. Let me get some funk real quick. Let me get something funky. The Iron Rap Poor Stereo Podcast is sponsored by Casper Mattresses, an obsessively engineered mattress at a shockingly fair price. Time Magazine named it one of the best adventures of 2015. Try a Casper mattress for 100 nights risk-free in your own home. If you don't love it, they'll pick it up and refund you everything. It's made in America. You could spend up to $2,000 on a king-size mattress, but Casper sells their king for $950, and the prices just get better and better. Buying a Casper mattress is completely risk-free. Casper offers free delivery and free returns with a 100-night home trial. 
You get to sleep on it, lay on it, do whatever the hell you want. For 100 nights, if you do not want it, they come pick it up for free. Go to Casper.com, C-A-S-P-E-R. Get $50 towards any mattress purchased by visiting Casper.com forward slash Rappaport. That's Casper.com forward slash Rappaport. Use the code Rappaport. Terms and conditions apply. They have pillows. They have sheets. They have duvets. They have it all now. They have. They even have pool mattresses. Dang. You know, like for the for the pool. It's just getting better and better. I love Casper. I'm proud that they're a sponsor of the Iron Rapport Stereo Podcast. And uh, you know, I, I I just love this fucking podcast. The fact that we went platinum. It's dope. We're still. We are definitely arranging this platinum party. We want to do it right. We don't want to just piecemeal together. Do not worry. It'll be open to anybody who listens to the Iron Rapport Stereo Podcast. Um, all the reviews on iTunes, please continue. New listeners. Yeah, we love them. Um, we, we, we love them. They help uh, get the word out. If you want soft-ass Iron Rapport Stereo Podcast t-shirts, go to www.districtlines.com forward slash I am Rapaport. We have the new Hard Body Karate t-shirt. And it's hard body, and it says hard body karate, but it's also a soft-ass t-shirt. I mean, what more can you ask for? No doubt. I don't know. Yo, uh, you see me wearing them. I rock my shit on television. What the fuck you want me to do? <laughs> Yo, I have a, I have an acting question, man. Okay, give it to me. Give it to me, man. Here's, the, here's me. the deal. In your opinion, what constitutes yeah. great acting? In my opinion, it's a good question, Monetti. What constitutes great acting yes. is an honesty. Mm. If you believe, essentially at the end of the day, if you believe... What that person, that, that, that woman or man is doing on screen, uh, on, on stage, shout out to all the, 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 the theater actors, mm-hmm. uh, even in a commercial, right. when they're selling a product, the believability. Mm. And then when you add the seasoning, the, 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 the salt, the pepper, the paprika, and all the other shit, when you get into De Niro land, Sean Penn land, mm-hmm. Al Pacino land, Denzel land, when you get into greatness, when you get into that suspended reality land, and they don't always do it every single time, but, but those guys that I mentioned um, uh, along with many, 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 many other people, it could be the person on your favorite you know, TV show, Brian Cranston, Tony Super. it doesn't matter. It could be a supporting actor on, on Law & Order. When you get into that, you know, where you're just compelled. Right. That's right. like your seasoning. But the bare bones, the, the, for me, what constitutes great acting is the believability. If you could believe what you're seeing and what you're hearing, right. and you get lost in what you're seeing and what you're hearing. So that, that's my short answer. That, that's another great question uh, from the 2015 uh, Stereo uh, Podcast co-host of the year. No doubt. So I know I have not done the De Niro line of the week. Um Apologies, um, but I'm back with the De Niro line of the week, and I, and and I was really trying to figure out something special to do, and then it, it hit me like a bolt of lightning. Since uh, LeBron James is now the Henry Hill of the NBA, what better De Niro line of the week scene should I do than Henry Hill? Tommy DeVito, Jimmy Conway, with Spider played by Michael Imperio. So it's De Niro, Pesci, Ray Liotta, and, uh, you know, the other crew. Frank Adonis is in that scene. You know, he's also in the scene. So this is the scene, uh, the second scene with Spider in Goodfellas, which is a classic amongst classics, amongst classics. Um, but this, this De Niro line of the week is dedicated to LeBron James since he's now anointed uh, the Henry Hill of the NBA for snitching on Draymond Green, consequently giving the Cleveland Cavaliers the edge of uh, to the game, game five, which me and Moody will get into after this. Um, but here is me playing all three parts. It, it's not a very uh, heavy uh, De Niro scene. It's more of a uh, it's more of a um, Joe Pesci scene, but you know. Joe Pesci, De Niro, De Niro, Joe Pesci, you know what it is. All right, so this is the second time Spider came back, and this is after he shot him. Jimmy Conway, Tommy DeVito, Henry Hill. 
Joe Pesci shoots him and action. What the fuck is the matter with you? What is it? What the fucking matter with you? What are you, stupid or what, Tommy? I'm kidding with you. What the fuck are you doing? What are you, a fucking sick maniac? Ah, how am I supposed to know you're kidding? Well, what do you mean you're kidding? You're breaking my fucking balls. I'm fucking kidding with you. You fucking shoot the guy? He's dead. I'm a good shot. What do you want from me? I'm a good shot. He's a fucking rat anyway. His whole family's rats. He's going to grow up to be a rat also. You stupid bastard. I can't fucking believe you. You know what? You're going to dig the fucking thing now. You're going to dig the fucking hole. You're going to do it. I got no fucking line. You're going to do it. Well, who cares? Wait, is, I'll dig a fucking hole. I don't give a fuck. What was the first fucking hole I dig? It's not the first time I dug a hole. I'll dig the fucking hole. Where the shovels? That's it. Good fellas. De Niro line of the week. It's been a long time. Uh, but we're back with De Niro line of the week. That scene was dedicated to LeBron James, a.k.a. the snitch, a.k.a. the Henry Hill of the NBA. We'll be right back with more I Am Rapport Stereo podcast. Welcome to Play It, a new podcast network featuring radio and TV personalities talking business, sports, tech, entertainment, and more. Play it at play.it. All right, so we talked enough about... uh, the suspension, uh, the De Niro line of the week. Um, you know, I, 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 I think this is a, a quintessential I Am Rappaport Stereo podcast. We've covered it all. And now we got to go back to fucking Cleveland because the Cavaliers beat an undermanned Golden State Warriors team. I called it. Oh yeah, you call, big fucking oh you you fucking Nostradamus you're like you're, you're like fucking Jimmy the Greek over here. <laughs> that that is correct, my friend. Yeah, you, you're a real fucking uh, you, you're a real Kreskin, you fuck. <laughs> hey, LeBron ain't gonna let them guys just lose like that. Remember, well, remember, this is LeBron James. Remember when he's with Cleveland earlier in his career against? Yeah, Boston? I know, I know. We all fucking know. Yeah, don't you mean before he jumped ship? Like he's and chopped did, liver. Did, 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 I didn't say he was chopped liver. We're going I thought back he was blood Cleveland. in the water, but I never said he was chopped liver. I thought he was blood in the water. Uh, I, I thought Golden State would be able to pull it out. I, I, they didn't pull it out, and I got to go back to fucking Cleveland. And I say I like I'm actually going. Fuck. You see what uh, I'm saying? So, with this, so, see with Steph Curry, games like this, you got you're a superstar. You close them out. If you want to be considered on par with Michael Jordan and these guys, these guys close those games out, and they're celebrating tonight. They don't go back home. They don't go back to the opponent's home. Yeah, well, this was an asterisk type of situation because they— uh, Oh, yeah, LeBron, yeah, he snitched on guys, yeah. Yeah, he's a fucking Henry Hill of the NBA. <laughs> I said it once, I said it twice, and I probably said it five times during this podcast, and I'll say it one more time, all right? He's the Henry Hill of the NBA. Yeah. Him and D'Angelo Russell are, are, are contending for NBA snitch of the year. I mean, it's going to be hard to beat D'Angelo for what he did, but this the, the consequences of what LeBron did are, 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 are competitive. So anyway, so so since you're so since you're so on top of it, since you're like Mister, you know, you have your finger on the pulse of what's going to happen in the NBA. What, what's your prediction for Game Six back in Cleveland, Mister? Uh, Mister Everything. Uh, Cleveland wins this in in uh, in, in Cleveland. And it's up for grabs game seven. You can't, you can't predict who's going to win. So I got Cleveland in game uh, in six. And in seven, I don't know who's going to win. Okay. Okay. So you, you only know some predictions. Six. Game six. Because okay. game seven, right. you never know who, who you, can't, you can't. Okay. I just was checking to see how confident you were in your picks. My, my man, Wood Harris, he, he's so happy that Draymond got suspended. He wasn't saying shit. I didn't hear from him for days until Draymond got suspended. Now he's blowing up my tech, my phone. Wood Harris, you, you fuck. Oh, uh, I'll, Yeah, I'll be getting him back on the podcast. I'll be getting him back on the podcast. ASAP. <laughs> it, was, it was deranged Chicago shit. He's so, he's so enraged that they beat the precious Chicago Bulls uh, uh, record. All right, anyway. We're going to wrap it up. Uh, this has a, a, been a, a really, uh, I'm, I'm proud of this episode. This is a good episode, solid episode. Continue to, uh, you know, vote and, and rate for us on iTunes. You know, you could rate us shitty. You could rate us great. Yes. You could rate us any, anything in between. Um, and uh, what more can I say, man? Uh, what, what else did I say, Moody? You said uh, uh, tell the people about uh, 
July 28th in Minnesota, Minneapolis. Uh, you oh, yeah. We're, we're doing it. I told the people about the live stuff. Uh, 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 we're, we're, we're live and direct. First date is July 28th in Minnesota. The tickets will be on our site the 16th. Um, and then we're going to be in, uh, we're, we're going to be, we're doing th- a three day gig. It's, it's a world tour, except for we're starting here in the United States. Yes. Um, and we haven't really booked anything outside of the country yet, but rest assured we will get there. Hell yeah. Um, it's the I am rap Poor stereo podcast, by the way, we have the baddest. And when I say bad, I mean, good beats in the business. So, uh, miles Davis, and we also have the dopest producers. Uh, we got my man, miles Davis and Jordan winter. Let, let, take us out with some, 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 something real funky, something dirty and let it rock for a little bit. Cause don't, don't just give them a little sample. Miles, give me that scatter. Uh, and we're out. <laughs>